So we say nika. What is nika? So this is the Arabic word of nika, and this is the transliteration for nika. So what is nika? I believe most of you have heard about nika, and uh, you go there, you celebrate. So what is it entailed? What does it entail? So we're saying that nikah is an Arabic term used for marriage, which means a contract. So nikah, the literal meaning of nikah is uh, marriage, uh, is used when people are getting married, and the meaning of it is just a contract. Uh, we're just signing a contract. But <coughs> we're saying that marriage is a mutual, it shouldn't be a two-way traffic, it's a mutual contract, or a legal union, uh, union. It's so it's not illegal, but legal union between a man and a woman. So the gender matters between a man and a woman who are sane and mature. So they know what they are doing, and also they are mature who have expressed their willingness. So if they are not forced to do that, to stay as a husband and a wife in order to become a pious family and a society so they are willing to live together uh, that is to become a family a pious family a religious family and also make up a society then the contracts must be guided by the quran and sunnah of the prophet peace be upon him so it's just, uh, not just a contract just like that but they should follow the teachings of the quran and the sunnah of the holy prophets peace be upon him so that is uh, the definition of uh, uh, the word nikah so marriage islam so what is marriage in islam how do people get married in islam so we're saying that marriage is a vital part is a very important and a vital that is something which is very uh, delicate uh, in uh, that is in uh, the Muslims life why in fact marriage is so important in Islam that it is declared to be a half of Muslims faith so uh, Islam is very uh, important very vital in the Muslims life and it is considered or declared as a half of the Muslims faith Muslim Iman or Muslims did so as a Muslim one should live in accordance that is according uh, with uh, to the Islamic jurisprudence that is fit in the way shown by the Prophet, peace be upon him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Among those who are uh, who among you, uh, those among you who are single or the, uh, the virtuous ones among your slaves, male or female, if they are in poverty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them means out of his grace. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses all and he knows all things. That is in chapter 24 verse 32. So let's listen to this chapter. Prophet 
Allah's peace be upon him in this uh, hadith is uh, he said that uh, like uh, who among the youth who uh, is able to marry who can marry then he should do so and if he uh, that's a youth or that person is unable to marry then he should uh, fast because it will act as a protective uh, or uh, it will protect him that is from the evil so that is the hadith uh, let's look at now the purpose of marriage so why do people get married so what's the purpose of people getting married so he's saying that one is to fulfill Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us from the, uh, the verse that we just listened Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to uh, marry so marriage is a commandment is a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which must therefore be fulfilled by every Muslim who is able so if you are able to do so then you should marry so it is considered as completing half of one's religion and we therefore and Allah's reward so it is we could say that it is declared that it, uh, it's a half of uh, a Muslim's uh, uh, faith so when you get married it's like you have completed a half of your deal then secondly marriage secures a comfortable atmosphere for both the husband and the wife so it secures that you are comfortable with one another and a Muslim couple who follow the teachings of the Holy Quran will always be a source of comfort for each other so when you go ask for the teachings of the Quran you will be a source of uh, 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 for each other that is a source of comfort for one another so the relationship should go beyond that of mere sexual enjoyment so it's not about just sexual fulfillment of sexual uh, pleasures and should be based on a cordial relationship that is friendship so it should you should be friends you should be comfortable living with one another and accompanied by mutual understanding so you also you should also understand one another so the holy quran says one of his signs is that he created for you uh, for you spouses of your own species so that you might find comfort with them and he put mutual love and affection in your hearts. Surely in this there are lessons for the thinking people. So that is in chapter 30, verse 21. So let's listen to this verse. Amen. Or an salary. So even if the wife works or is wealthy, then 
but they still the uh, husband has to look after the family. So the fifth reason is for uh, companionship. That we talk about friendship, we talk about uh, comfort. So marriage provides close interaction between the man and the woman in mutual sharing of responsibilities and ideas. So you, uh, when uh, you come together as friends, you uh, understand you are comfortable with one another. So you interact with one another and share your responsibilities and also ideas. So this relationship makes the husband and the wife to live together harmoniously, so in peace and ha uh, happiness. Uh, for example, in our homes, our parents consult each other uh, on matters related to our welfare, like paying off our school fees, uh, buying off uh, our clothes, among other responsibilities. So they came together, they talk, you know, to come with either a solution or consult one another on the matter that relates to the welfare of that particular family. Then also marriage has to safeguard one's iman, so it safeguards one's faith. It prevents one from committing immoral acts, so uh, the immoral act begins the sexual perversions and so on. So these sins such as uh, intermingling with members of the opposite sex or all having sexual relations outside marriage are not acceptable in Islam because it creates immorality and immodesty. So these are the against the sexual perversions or immorals uh, or uh, that is uh, just mingled with the opposite sex or you just have sexual relations with uh, other uh, people but outside marriage then. So if people get married then it's safeguard their iman that is from uh, uh, committing these immoral acts. Then it's also, lastly, it also promotes inter-family alliance. So it brings people together, different family together. So through marriage, family ties are strengthened. So it comes strong between the families of the couples who become relatives. So when they come together, these families now become relatives. So this promotes peace, harmony, and friendship in the society. So when they come together, this family together, they live together peacefully and they live uh, together harmoniously and it also promotes friendship between them in that particular society. So that's all about the purpose of uh, marriage. If you have any question, you can ask via the Google Classroom or the WhatsApp group. Otherwise, thank you and have a lovely day.